Here are the top mistakes to avoid when you're traveling to Europe while packing. There was once a time I used to leave packing for my trip until the very last day. I would think to myself, packing, ah, that's not a big deal. I would spend significant amount of time deciding the destination and creating an itinerary and researching various attractions. However, packing was never a priority for me. Little did I know that this negligence would lead to several incidents that transformed my travel experiences into unpleasant ones. I will delve into those incidents later as we talk through these travel mistakes, but I have traveled to Europe countless times and during each of these visits, I learned that I was repeatedly making the same mistakes. Gradually, with subsequent trip to Europe, I experienced remarkable improvements simply by unlocking the correct approach to packing by talking to a lot of other travelers who have been traveling a lot more than what experience I have. Hello, I'm Arvind Sareen, a digital nomad and a tech CEO who is on the mission to travel to every single country in the next five years. Today, I'm here to ensure that you'll never make the common packing mistakes on your upcoming Europe trip. Stay tuned until the end to discover the best tips to pack for your European adventure in 2023. So without further ado, let's discuss the first mistake. Walking into the airport with a massive roller bag or an oversized checked suitcase may seem like the epitome of the travel style that we all desire. If you will be using trains or buses as a means of transport, have you considered how challenging it might be to carry that oversized bag with you everywhere you go? I vividly recall my first trip to Lisbon, where I unfortunately had to drag my roller bags from one hostel to another. This might happen to you as well. Europe often involves navigating through crowded streets and public transportation and historic sites where maneuvering with excess baggage can be a challenge. Packing light allows for greater mobility and flexibility during your travels. It's easier to navigate stairs, cobblestone streets, and other uneven surfaces without the burden of heavy luggage. So next time you choose your travel bag, make sure it's lightweight, portable, and easy to carry. Consider choosing a backpack during your European travels. It offers advantages of hands-free movement on treks, varied terrains, and local transportation. A backpack serves a signature mark of a confident solo travel. Another important question to address is, how many bags to carry during your travels. Now, I'm well aware that your particular situation may vary. You may have a lot of gear that you want to carry. You may have tons of dresses for every spot and you want to get those Instagram photos and these reels that you want to create. So it's important that you have a lot of what you're needing for that destination. Traveling with just two bags, a day pack and the main backpack offers numerous advantages. For some people, if you don't want to carry such a huge backpack on your shoulders, then you can and also consider a roller bag but a smaller one not the very big one Ah, I hear you loud and clear. The desire to change clothes for every destination, to capture those unique Instagram photos that we talked about, and always to dress impeccably, and all of that is understandable, but I have to say that you don't need so many clothes. Just have a bunch of t-shirts and one or two jeans, and you can just wash it every few weeks. Consider a few key factors when choosing a backpack for your Europe trip. First, focus on the size and capacity. Look for a backpack that meets the airline carry-on restrictions and offers sufficient space. Typically around 40 to 50 liters can be a good mark and the maximum you can get is 80 liters. That can get pretty heavy and you can pretty much fit your entire month long clothes in that one backpack. Choosing a backpack with padded shoulder straps and a supportive back would also go a long way. Also consider security features like lockable zippers, hidden pockets to safeguard your valuables in crowded areas or if you're going to be staying at a dorm. Now moving along, the second common packing mistake is the tendency to overpack. It was a major blunder that I realized only when, during my time in Paris, the stitches of my backpack decided to give away, mocking me for my mistake. I had to spend an extra 50 euros to purchase a new backpack. Now I consider that backpack as a souvenir from Paris. However, you don't need to acquire such a souvenir. Simply pack a limited amount of clothes and essentials for several compelling reasons. First, normalizing packing, just a pair of jeans with a few t-shirts is gonna be plenty fine for your Europe trip. And remember, you can always purchase those souvenir t-shirts for 10 to 15 euros any place you go. Secondly, this practice can also save you money on your airfare. Many European airlines enforce strict baggage weight restrictions and charge fee for exceeding the limit. Also, remember, even 
mission on a Ryanair flight, which typically you can go to a lot of European countries for like 20, 30, 40 bucks. If you have an extra bag and that applies even to your backpack, they're going to charge you 45 euros for each time you board a flight. So for a round trip, that's another 90 euros. Lastly, one of the most compelling reasons to avoid overpacking is to leave ample space for souvenirs and other shopping that you might do. Like me, most people wouldn't want to bring a backpack as a souvenir. By packing light, you can ensure there's room for meaningful keepsakes and truly capture the essence of your European adventure. Another valuable trip is to experiment with colors and combinations that can create multitude of outfits. Additionally, it's wise to avoid packing clothes that wrinkle easily, as this will save you time and effort on ironing or finding alternative solutions. With these strategies, you can create a well-rounded and efficient travel wardrobe, allowing you to make most of your limited space while keeping your fashion game on point. Here's a nifty travel hack for both one bag and two bag travelers, the packable day pack a compact, lightweight, and often affordable backpack during your trip. When you want to leave your larger bag behind, simply take out the packable day pack. It's perfect for carrying essential items like sunglasses, rain jacket, water bottle, and other necessities. Talking about the third mistake I made while packing for Europe cannot stop me from giggling. This particular mistake revolves around packing the wrong kind of clothing. Europeans have a distinct sense of fashion and blending in as a tourist could help you avoid falling victim to popular tourist scams. Speaking from personal experience, I actually got robbed during my time in Europe and you can watch that entire incident on my channel under the title Travel Trends 2023 to not get robbed. It was a really fun video. Choosing well-fitting jeans or trousers paired with stylish tops or blouses, layering is key. So pack a few sweaters or cardigans for cooler weather. Choose comfortable walking shoes as exploring European cities often involves a lot of walking. Avoid flashy accessories or expensive jewelry to minimize the risk of attracting unwanted attention. The next mistake that we're talking about is missing the important things. Okay, that's a big one. When preparing for your exciting Europe trip, there are a few essential items that you should not forget to pack. First and foremost, ensure that you have all of your essential medical products. As an example, I carry a nasal spray and I have a bit of a deviated septum that makes it hard for me to breathe sometimes. That nasal spray comes in handy and it's difficult to replace while I'm in Europe because it doesn't have the same ingredients. Double check the expiration date on your medicine so that you're carrying the right ones. Next one, doctor. Documents, obviously pretty important for you Americans. You just need your passport. Uh, but if you have some visas or some other different type of a plan or a passport, like for my Indian friends, then make sure you're carrying your visas for those countries. And remember, even for Americans, when you're visiting, your limit is 90 days. There is a rule that for 90 days, American travelers can be there in Europe and then you have to go back to your home country before coming back. So it's not like you could just go to Africa or go to Middle East and then be back in Europe although they don't check and especially because I enter Europe through London and there is just a scanning of the passport just go to the automated machines no one's gonna ask you that's a glitch it's always a good idea to make copies of important documents and have them on clouds next one don't overlook the importance of adapters and chargers see European countries uh, as you know have a different type of plug but not only that it can change between London and Europe and some of the other specific countries so for me, I have a travel adapter that works all over the world. So that has these different pins that you could slide in and out and then you have your adapter ready to go with multiple USB charging points. So that's really important. Also remember the voltage. It is the same as the US, um, but sometimes it can be 220 if you're traveling to other countries. Weather conditions also vary significantly in Europe. So it's essential to check the forecast for each of your destinations. And don't forget to include a lightweight jacket or this puffy jacket that always works for me. Even during the summer months, I have it handy because it can get really compact and can fit in my day pack because evenings can get a little chilly. And like I said, if you take any medications, be sure to bring ample supply for the duration of your trip and it's a good idea to carry your prescriptions as well. 
We'll conclude this video by discussing the last hacking mistake now. It is not very much more than not having to pack the unnecessary stuff. One such item is heavy hiking shoes, which can take up a lot of space and add unnecessary weight to your luggage. Unless you have a specific plan for extensive hiking or tracking, it's advisable to opt for lightweight walking shoes that are comfortable for urban exploration. For me, I always have something really fun that's adventurous, that involves a lot of walking across the city so what I do is just wear your bulky hiking shoes so you're not having to fit them in your luggage. Another common culprit is the inclusion of hiking poles. Trust me you don't need them. They are often excessive for any hike or even sightseeing leisurely walks. You're not gonna be using those. Now if you really need those you could also rent them or buy them right there as well. Consider leaving them behind unless you have a specific hike that requires you to have those and you know that it's gonna cost you more and you're willing to just carry it all the other places that you go. Uh, T-shirts are also often packed without careful consideration. Again, as I mentioned, you could always buy some new T-shirts and it's going to be really exciting for you to have a local souvenir from them. And make sure that your T-shirts have some moisture wicking and outdoor activity T-shirts because you may need those for the European cities. Furthermore, some travelers mistakenly bring neck pillows for flights even though many airlines provide them as an in-flight amenity. By relying on provided neck pillow you can save on space in your carry-on and avoid the hassle of carrying additional items. Lastly, there is a misconception that DSLR or mirrorless cameras are essential for capturing stunning travel photos. While these high-end cameras offer superior image quality, modern smartphone cameras have significantly improved and they can also provide us impressive results. Unless you are a travel vlogger like I am and then you would have to carry your camera, your drone and many other items. I have two GoPros, I have one DJI Pocket which is pretty portable and then I have up my bulky Sony Alpha 7 IV. All right, we've covered some of the common packing mistakes to avoid when embarking on your European trip. I hope these insights will assist you in planning a memorable trip and an enjoyable journey. Thank you for sticking around and watching this video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and share your valuable comments below. Remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for future travel tips and videos. Wishing you a fantastic journey. Goodbye.